think uh, paragraph four <laughs> is where you're going to start. The world is an episode of the next one. Testament two. Test is good. Well, everybody, thanks for coming out today. Yay. Yes, yes. I don't know about you, but I need the truth. Yes. I need some truth. Welcome to Facebook Live. Welcome to a hardcore. And what well, is hardcore anyway? But welcome to the Course in Miracles <laughs> with Earl Purdy. And I want to welcome you to the Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles. The Course in Miracles. Here on Facebook Live. <laughs> and we're going to be on page, we're going to continue with looking within, which we were, what we were doing last week, which I see went over really big with the group. Yes. And uh, we're going to start, we're going to, we're going to go back to uh, looking within. Those of you who are watching online, we're going to be on page 230. Looking within, in the Course in Miracles text, the Holy Spirit's curriculum, the Holy Spirit's curriculum, the Holy Spirit's curriculum, the Holy Spirit's curriculum, the loving right mind's curriculum. So when we say Holy Spirit, we're talking about your loving right mind. I'm going to do the Course in Miracles in plain language so that we can hear what it's saying. And let me get up. Uh, let me get it up on my phone so I can see the comments. Let's see here. All right. Man, I love I love listening to the Course in Miracles, and I love how it helps me see things differently. Because I don't know about you, but you know, it looks like to me we're in a very awesome opportunity. That's what I call this world. It's an awesome opportunity. So what are the guidelines in the Course in Miracles? If you're tuning in for the first time or it's the first time that you've been to a Course in Miracles class, these are the guidelines to the course. The guidelines to the course are you need not believe the ideas, you need not accept the ideas, you need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist. 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 Some of the ideas you will or may find hard to believe. Some of the ideas you may find hard to believe. Some of the ideas you may find hard to believe. And some of the ideas might be quite startling. Some of the stuff from the course may startle you. I hope y'all love the palm of my hand. <laughs> Maybe I can get a reading from somebody who just saw that when I covered up the camera. <laughs> you already a been palm read, reading? Been read. Yeah, yeah, palm I reading. I put my whole palm life. over it. Yeah. You've been read. That's right. That's right. Uh, some of the ideas you would find hard to believe, and it says some of the ideas may startle you. How many of you had that experience with the Course in Miracles, where some of the ideas you resisted? Uh -huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then some of the ideas you you went, this is really hard to believe, yes. right? And then it says, then some of you just get plain startled. You go, man. But that's what attracted me to the Course in Miracles. Uh -huh. What runs most people away from the Course in Miracles is what attracted me to the Course in Miracles. Because anything that I would resist as much as I initially resisted some of the things in the course, it kind of made me feel like maybe I need to check this out a little bit closer because yeah. why am I reacting to this so intensely yet I'm attracted to it? Exactly. You know, so when I first started studying the Course in Miracles, it'll be 40 years this year mm -hmm. when I first got introduced to the Course in Miracles and started studying it. And <clears throat> I would go through all the resistance that I see a lot of people that stop them from studying it whether it's the Christian terminology, the masculine terminology, or the fact that it's just saying stuff that's totally opposite to what the world teaches us, right? For a lot of people, that's all it takes to make, they say they want to hear something different, but that, they say they want to hear something new, 
But most people don't realize when you say you want to hear something new, you're saying you want to hear something different. <laughs> and then the minute you hear something, then, then the minute they hear something different, they run for the hills. It's like, wait a minute now, you're saying you want to hear something new. So even if you don't agree with it, at least let yourself hear something new, right? And so I don't know about you, but but for me, no matter what came up that the course would say that I would have resistance around, it never occurred to me to stop studying it the once I made the commitment to start studying it. And so I would, so I would have the same, the, the, the thing that was the most in, interesting is still very true, I find, which is that there are two things. People will read the course, and then they'll go, what the hell did I just read? They'll say, it looks like English, and I just got to read this paragraph, and I don't have the slightest idea what I just got to read. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I would notice uh, with the Course in Miracles is that um, it would flat out say stuff that was the opposite of every single thing that I've ever been taught. And so, like for instance, that's what we were talking about looking within. And we're on page 230, looking within, 230, paragraph 5. I'm starting with paragraph 5, page 230. It's in chapter 12, the Holy Spirit's curriculum. The Course in Miracles is talking about love and fear. And um, what I'm going to do is go through the paragraph, read the whole paragraph, then go back and then we're going to hit with the points uh, in that paragraph, what it's trying, the points that it's trying to make. Um, <clears throat> And we're going to start out with each sentence in the Course in Miracles I've found to be what I call a universal law. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, to me, it's a book full of universal metaphysical spiritual laws. Let me give you an example. Uh, in, in, in paragraph five, the first thing it says is, you see what you expect, mm -hmm. and you expect what you invite. Mm -hmm. So what you invite is what you expect and what you see. So... What, so most people go, well, I'm not seeing what I expect to see, or I'm not seeing what I invited in. When you say stuff like that, you're just saying your belief. Right. That's the only thing you're doing. You're just saying, <laughs> all you're doing is you're just saying, I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. But because you don't believe that doesn't make it not true that you see what you expect, you expect what you invite. So instead of going to the place of negativity about that, what happens with me is I go in the opposite direction. Oh, I see what I expect, and I expect what I invite. If I don't like what I see, I need to start inviting something else. Yeah. So I need to go, what is it I need to focus on that I'd like to have, rather than spending a lot of time arguing about whether or not I invited what I'm already experiencing. Right. That's you, you follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then it says, your perception is the result of your invitation. So when you're studying the Course, and you see, like that sentence too, in paragraph five, it says, your perception is the result of your invitation. Then you see a comma, and then the rest of the sentence says, coming to you as you sent for it. So you could read that, your perception is the result of your in invitation means your perception comes to you as you sent for it. So that means that your perception is the result of your invitation and when I look at you, I'm seeing what I invited to come in, and I'm seeing what I sent for. So if I was to say, well, it doesn't look like I invited this situation or perception that I'm having in my life right now, and if this is true, then it means there's a part of me that's inviting things and asking for things that I'm not in touch with, yes. or this is not true. Mm -hmm. Those are your two options. Either this is not mm -hmm. true, or there's a part of you that's inviting things that you don't know about. And how many of us, like right now, you're breathing, but you're not sitting here consciously controlling your breathing. It's being taken care of, and you're not even thinking about it. So uh, expand that to everything, that you could have other unconscious decisions and functions that you are doing that you don't know about. And that's what the Course in Miracles is saying to us is that your perception is the result of your invitation. It's coming to you as you sent for it. So to me, that says again, if it's something I don't like that I'm perceiving, then I have some control over it because I have some control over the way that I'm seeing things. And so the Course in Miracles says, what manifestations would you see? So what do you want to see? Of whose presence do you want to be convinced of? Do you want to see the manifestations of fear? Or do you want to see the manifestations of love? And do you want to know the presence of God, spirit, love, 
or are you wanting to be aware of the presence of fear in the ego and guilt? So it says, what presence, whose presence do you want to be convinced of is the same as saying, what do you now want to invite? Mm -hmm. If you look at those sentences, all it did was restate the same thing three different ways. It, it says, first you see what you expect and you expect what you invite. Advice. Then, you, then the man goes, I don't understand that. Oh, well, he said, okay, let me say it another way. Your perception is the result of your invitation coming to you as you sent for it. I don't understand that. Well, whose manifestations do you want to see? No. <laughs> whose presence do you want to be convinced of? The presence of God or the presence of the ego? The presence of love or the presence of fear? For you will believe in what you manifest, and as you look out, so will you see in. That says a lot, you all. Right. Mm -hmm. if, if, it's, if he says, you will believe in what you manifest. So it's hard to convince somebody that something isn't true that they're manifesting. If I'm manifesting a toothache, it's hard for you to convince me that my toothache isn't real right. because I'm manifesting it. Mm -hmm. So when you, and so if a person has manifested a life that's very challenging for them, and then you tell them that's an illusion, that's not real, or even that there's another alternative, it's, it's generally difficult to get them to believe what you're saying. Why? Because they have manifested a situation or circumstance that they're actually experiencing and they're in it. Right. And so it's just like, that, and that's what he just said. You will believe in what you manifest. Mm -hmm. See, I have, I have a lot of loving, peaceful people in my life and in this moment, peaceful circumstances. So I believe in it. Yep. I believe it's possible to have loving people in your life. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's possible to do what you love every day because I do that. I, you know, I've been a full-time teacher for 30 years. I know I'm taking care. I know I'm uh, provided for by the Holy Spirit, by some greater power, because people come and go. I never know who's going to be here, and still the universe continues to provide for me. So what does that do? I've manifested a life that I believe in. Yeah. And so the Course in Miracles is saying that's true for everybody. You've manifested a life you believe in. It's the life you live in right now. It's the life you believe in. There's been people go, no, I don't, I don't believe in having a broken relationship. Yes, you do. <laughs> There's a part of you that, for whatever reason, has not learned how to give yourself peace in relationships yet. There's a part of you that, because there's no, do you, do you see that there's absolutely no advantage, really, in seeing yourself as a victim? No, mm -hmm. zero. It, it, see, the thing about it is, there's, it, show me an advantage of it. Like, there are a lot of people that will defend the idea. They get upset when you, when the course and books like this say you are not a victim. And they get really upset. What do you mean? That, my so, that my, I wasn't abused by so-and-so. I didn't say you weren't abused. I'm saying you're not a victim. That's not the same thing. I'm saying you are not a victim. And it wouldn't be to your advantage for me to see you as one. And it's not to your advantage to see you as one. Because now there's nothing you can freely do about it if you have absolutely no control over it. And at the very least, you got control over how you see it. Because that's what it says. You see what you expect. So if I expect to see myself as abused, then I see myself as abused. But what it really is, is, a, is an opportunity for me to learn how to see things differently. And it's time for me to start inviting something new into my life. Right? So the Course in Miracles says, for you will believe in what you manifest. And then look at the, second, the other part of the sentence. It says, as you look out, so will you see in. So that means that if you want to know what's going on in the inside of you, look at what's going on on the outside of you. Like, like, look at, like sometimes when I, heard the, when I used to hear the phrase, looking within, I would think of it as me sitting quietly, looking, looking at the thoughts and stuff within myself. That's true. That is looking within. But the Course says, even if you open your eyes and you look out, you're looking within. You're looking within. Because what you're seeing outwardly is a reflection of your consciousness and the thoughts that you have within. So I'm looking at what's within me right now. If it looks like there's a lot of attack and a lot of fear and a lot of conflict, it's because I have that within my own consciousness. If I see a lot of peace, a lot of joy, a lot of love, a smiling face, it means there's a part of me that's that way. So if I want to know what's going on inside of me, then all I have to do is look outside of me. Right. And I'll know what's going on inside of me. And then the next law is two ways of looking at the world 
are in your mind. So the, what is the Course saying? It says you had two ways of looking at things. Mm -hmm. How many ways? Two. 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 Now the ego, the part of us that wants to keep us in conflict, will say there's a multitude of ways of looking at the world. <laughs> but the Course says, nah. There's only two. You're either looking at things through the eyes of peace or you're looking at things through the eyes of conflict. And that can appear in many different forms, but you're only looking at two things, right? Then the next thing it says is uh, they're where? In your mind. There are two ways of looking at things in your where? Mind. And your perception, which is what you see, is going to reflect the guidance you've chosen. If, I, if, if I'm seeing nothing but fear and conflict in my life, then, I'm, then I am being guided by a way of looking at things that is based in fear. I'll say it again. If all I see is conflict, lack, anger, sickness, and attack, then according to this, that's a way of looking at things in my mind, and what I'm seeing reflects the guidance that I'm listening to. What I'm looking at reflects the guidance I have chosen. Now, why in the world would people sit around and analyze that? What would be the point of analyzing what we just heard? To resist it so I don't have to implement it. That's yes, right. If, yes, if, if, yes. if I make it complicated, it's the best excuse I could use for not applying it. <laughs> so people love to make things complicated that they're not ready to do yet. Because then you have a read. Well, I don't understand it. Well, your understanding isn't a powerful contribution to the truth. <laughs> okay, your, your, your understanding doesn't have anything to do with the truth of anything. Mm -hmm. And I used to believe that. Like somehow something wasn't true unless I understood it. And the Course in Miracles has just freed us up. What do you mean? Well, if you see what you invite and you, and you expect what you invite, why don't you start inviting some love, some peace, and some joy? If your perception is the result of your invitation coming to you as you sent for it, then why don't you invite some love and some peace and some joy? If, if you, if, uh, what manifestations do you want to see? Love or fear? Love. Of uh, what presence would you be convinced? Love or fear? Love. You will believe in what you manifest, whatever I manifest that I believe in right now. <laughs> and as I look out, if I see love, there's love inside of me. If I look out and see fear, it's fear inside of me because there are just two ways of looking at things in the mind according to the course. And what I see is reflecting the guidance I'm listening to. Who in the world above the eighth grade couldn't understand what was just said? Right. Except that maybe I'm not ready to take that level of responsibility yet. Mm -hmm. Because he said the two ways of looking at things is in your mind. Now, I'm going to throw it open for questions and comments for about five minutes, and then I'm going to keep going because I want to, keep, I, I want to make sure we cover a lot of material. So is there any, in, any comments, uh, questions about this paragraph we just covered. Well, the powerful like life law that I see in there okay. is that what it's really telling me is that however I choose to look at life, that's what I'm inviting in. So any circumstance that comes into my life can be a life, uh, can be a love or a fear circumstance. That's right. It's really how I choose to, but right. the more I choose for love, the less likely I'm going to have conflict. But even when I have conflict, I can look at it as love. You, because there are two ways of looking at right. things, so no matter what's going on, you can look at it from a loving perspective, or you can look at it from a fearful perspective. Absolutely. I know for myself, speaking for myself, I was raised in a fearful perspective, so someone like you talks about love, it's like an alien coming down and saying something to me, because I have no idea. All I know is my perspective of fear. And it seems like after, well, how long has it been? Ten years, I just sat there and just listened to your course a couple of days ago and got something out. Oh my God, that's what he meant. But for me, it's I had to gradually, through people like you and yourself, me too, to sit there all of a sudden and go, oh, that's what love is. But at some level, you you did what? You started to invite something else. Right. That's why you moved in that direction. You started to invite something else, that there's another way you can look at it. So one of the, I'm glad you mentioned that, because one of the most important things you can do when you first want to change the direction of your life, you must not, you must, you must not compare your present circumstances 
to the goal that you just set for yourself. <laughs> right. Because, what, because whatever situation you're in right now, that's the result of other such invitations in the past. Right. Have a lot of invitations out there. Right. It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like you ordered, you know, you ordered a, a, a veggie burger, and then you change your mind, and you said you wanted a cup of soup. They may still bring you the veggie burger. And you say, I changed my mind, I want a cup of soup. But you don't see a conflict between that because you realize you ordered the veggie burger and now you've been all, what's what the court is saying? Stop comparing your present situation to where you say you want to go. You know, it, it, you know, if you have lag right now, sickness right now, loneliness right now, that's that's your veggie burger order. <laughs> okay, and now you're saying you want a cup of soup. So you invite the soup. While, and then don't eat the veggie burger. Yeah, that's right. Or eat the veggie burger. Anyway, because sometimes they they'll just say keep it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what? And so the course. Anybody else before I go? On? Yes. And hey. I think that's what trips me up is the lag time. Yes. Is, yes. And then and then I lose trust and then I lose faith. And that's right. Oh no. And then I forget to invite again. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the course said? The lag time is. The course says the lag time is the time in which you still think you deserve to be punished and not to have what you want. Mm -hmm. Amen. He says, that's what the lag time is. You say, you say I want the love, and then, you, then it seems like it's six months. He's saying, well, that's because that's, that's the length of time that you still were at some level believing that you didn't deserve to have it. Mm -hmm. That's what the lag time is. Because, now, remember this, too. Everything that's real is... Everything that's real... It's always something you can have right now. So, and I'll say that again. Why? Because if it's a state of mind, if it's a perception, it's the, it's, if it's my way of looking at things, I can change that right now. Whenever you think that whatever you want takes time, do not fool yourself into thinking that that thing reflects the truth. <laughs> It might just be what you want, but it does not reflect the truth. I can want a house, and then they say it's going to take you six months to have a house. But for me, that is my absolute proof that the house is an illusion. Mm -hmm. Now, I can still get the house, and I can still live in the house, but I'm not going to fool myself into thinking I'm dealing with anything that is eternal and that is permanent. Because the Course in Miracles defines something that's real as something that never ends. Mm -hmm. So you tell me anything that ends, and you're telling me from a Course in Miracles perspective what an illusion is. It doesn't mean you're not going to drive the car. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you're not going to put on the coat. But what the Course is saying is that coat is not going to last forever. Which to me is all the more reason why you should let yourself enjoy the coat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This to me, mm -hmm. all the more reason why I should be enjoying my physical relationship with my friends and my partner is I know the physical relationship mm -hmm. is going to end. Right. Mm -hmm. One day one of y'all gonna leave the body. Yes. So there's so every time we 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 get totally invested in anything you can't have now. You're holding off your joy. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to be happy until you get your degree and then you get that job and then you get a certain amount of money, then you can move into a certain... Do you see how far off you are putting your joy? Mm -hmm. And the Course says that is a reflection of your still thinking you don't deserve to be happy. That's deep. Mm -hmm. See, that's what I love about this book is that whether you agree with it or not, you can't deny that it says things in such a way that you go, hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, do you have your hand up over here? No, no, yeah, it's okay. Okay, you ready? I'm good. Mabel. You know, I was just going to kind of say, um, you know, I've been there and I've heard it a lot where it's like, oh, it's going to take a really long time to change. And, you know, I've been doing this for so long that it's going to take a long time to change. And, like, I had to realize that that was a worthiness issue where it was like, I am not like worthy of having this right now because like you said, anything God would give you, you could have right now. So I just have to allow myself to have access to what is already mine through God. But because I, I believe it's a fact instead of a decision. But if I say, this is going to take a long time, that's not a fact, that's a decision I just made. Thank you. And yeah. so I've excluded the option mm. of anything else coming into my life because I've already decided it's gonna take a long time but the cool thing is, is I can choose again. 
You know, thank, thank you. God for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, at any point in time, you can change your mind. Yeah. Right? So let's go to the next paragraph of Universal Laws. Mm -hmm. I am the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. So in that case, it's talking about Jesus who channeled the course. Mm -hmm. Or you could say love. Or you could say spirit. Mm -hmm. But it says, I am the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Now, you could say you. If you are also a manifestation of the loving spirit. Mm -hmm. I am a manifestation of love, and you are a manifestation right. of love. And when you see me, because you may not see me as a manifestation of love, <laughs> there's some exes that would pretty much agree on that one. Um, when you see me, it will be because you have invited him. Yeah. See, it, it, he said, you will see love when you invite love. I am a manifestation of love, but you will see it when you invite that out of me. I'll see it when I invite love out of you. And then it says, for Holy Spirit will send you his witnesses if you will but look for them. So if you read this as love and fear, which is what the Course is, is teaching, then you could say, for love will send you its witnesses when, <laughs> now if, he says, love will send you it, its witnesses if you will but look at them. That's interesting. So that's, that's, that's the same as saying, if I'm willing to look at love, the witnesses will be sent to me. Mm -hmm. Right back to the, are you willing to look at people in a loving way? Yeah. Do you want yeah. to look at things mm -hmm. with peace? And he said, well, if you really do, the witnesses, what, will be sent to you. <laughs> yeah. right. It didn't say you had to go out, it didn't say you had to necessarily hit tender. <laughs> Even though that's not a bad thing, you know what I'm saying? You have to swipe right to get them. Yeah, you have to swipe right. Um, or maybe you do need to swipe right. <laughs> <laughs> both ways. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I could do both, okay? Okay. So, for, now listen to this. It says, the Holy Spirit, the voice for God, your higher self, your inner teacher, will send you his witnesses if you will but look at them. Why? Because I need to, I need to, you can notice it kept, it's been talking about invite, invite, invite. Mm -hmm. Letting us know it's not going to happen until you invite it. Mm -hmm. Love, the course says, love waits on welcome, no, on not on time. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not about time. It's about will you welcome me? Because that's the way I feel, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way you feel. You want somebody to welcome you. And when you're yeah. welcome, you will show up if you're that's a loving right. person. Right. If you're not a loving person, you're not going to force yourself on anybody. That's how you can always tell whether or not you really should get that person your phone number or go out with them. If you say no thank you, or you've indicated you're not interested, and they continue to try to force themselves on you, that's all you need to know about that person. You know they're fear-based. You know they don't know the truth. Mm -hmm. Because love waits on what? Welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you live that way, it can seem like it's a long time before mm -hmm. you're welcomed. <laughs> yeah. Do you know why? Yeah. Because that's the interval of time that you're supposed to be using to correct your perception, heal your mind, and, and get to the mm -hmm. point that you can handle a loving relationship. That's your training period. Oh, yeah. So the Course is saying, remember. Did they say remember? Remember. 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 Did, did it say analyze? No, it said what? It said, it said remember. I defy anybody to find one sentence in this book that says analyze <laughs> as, a, as something you should do. It says, remember always, it sounds like a repetition, doesn't it? You see what you seek, and what you seek, you will find. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, that's great. On the one hand, he's saying I can welcome it in the calm, but he also turns around and then says, what you seek, you will find. That's got both ends, of the, that's got both ends covered as far as I can see. So what does that mean if that's true? See, Everything yeah. that I've ever experienced in my life, I found something I was seeking, but I didn't know I was seeking it. Oh. That's what, that, if that's true, then everything that's ever happened to me was something I sought. And then it says, the ego, the fearful part of you, finds what it seeks. Oh, okay, so you're saying the crazy Earl, he's going to find what he's looking for, which is craziness. And then it says, and only that. Oh my I love it. Says, the ego finds what it seeks, which is separation and fear, and what? Only that. So when you're talking to an ego person, they just only see separation. 
Yeah. They see all the reasons why we shouldn't join, we shouldn't connect. I'm afraid of you, I'm angry at you, I can't join with you. That's the ego. And it says, the ego doesn't find love. So a fear-based person doesn't find love. Check that out. He said, doesn't find love. Why? Because a person that's rooted in their ego, a person that's rooted in fear, a person that's rooted in anger, that is not what it is seeking. A fear, so the court is saying a fearful separated person doesn't find love because it's not love that they're seeking. Mm -hmm. A fear-based person is seeking fear, mm -hmm. anger, guilt, and separation. And a love or peace-based person is seeking harmony, joy, and peace. So the Course in Miracles says seeking and finding are the same. See, see all these rules, mm -hmm. all these laws? Mm -hmm. So if seeking and finding are the same... I'm always finding what I'm seeking, always finding what I'm seeking, always finding what, or you can say I've always found what I've sought. I've always found what I've sought. Or you can say I'm going to find what I'm seeking. I'm going to find. And then people say, well, that's not true. I was seeking for prosperity and abundance and I didn't find it. Well, that's because you were not really seeking prosperity and abundance or you would have found it. And that's how you keep fooling yourself. Is it happening? No. Then it's not what you're seeking. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, yes, but, yes, but. I know your believing it has no effect on the law. Mm -hmm. So I'm just telling you whether you believe it or not, you, your life is the result of your invitation, and everything in your life is the result of your thoughts. And instead of arguing with that, just start sending out some new invitation. <laughs> All the energy you're getting ready to use to oppose what I just said, we could take that energy and go, what do you want? Mm -hmm. And we could start inviting the love now, rather than me spending the next 30 minutes trying to convince you that you weren't a victim. And, and, I, the yeah, old party. and, and, and Right. And I'm not going to do it. See, that's me. I, I, I do not defend the course. I do not try to force people to believe what I believe because if it's the truth, you're going to find out anyway. Whatever happens after you die, you're going to find out. <laughs> okay? Whatever happens after we die, we're going to find out. So I'm not going to... Now, I can't prove what happens after we die, right? So I can either choose to believe after we die, I can side with what the Course is saying, which is you have eternal life and you just drop your body and it's a liberation. <laughs> or I can believe what my church taught me when I was a kid, which is based on the things I've done, I'm going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> I want to invite that part. <laughs> but their definition of heaven, which is playing harps and speech paid the gold, sounds like Hell to me. Yeah. Right, and then all my partners, and my buddy's gonna be in hell. <laughs> so it's gonna, I'm not gonna be lonely. <laughs> so hell sounds more appealing to me than a guilty man's idea of heaven. Because a guilty man's idea of heaven is their own judgment of what they think morality is, right. how you should look, what you should do. You know what I'm saying? Think about it. People's idea of heaven is their, their value system being imposed on everybody else in terms of what heaven should look like. But when you hear hell, it sounds like a free fall in the sense that people associate hell with what? People doing what they want to do, regardless of what society is saying necessarily what you should do. Some of the worst atrocities that have ever been done to people have been done by society and the rules of society. It, was, it used to be, in the, in the, there was a time when the rules of society said it was okay for me to be a slave. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, a big, I'm not a big proponent on society telling me what's right or wrong or what's good or bad. Mm -hmm. Society, in most cases, is just a bunch of people that don't know the truth who made up some rules that keep everybody miserable. But some of those rules are cool. Some of those rules are cool, but some of those rules are really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so the Course says, a fearful person doesn't find love because they're not truly seeking love. It says, you're always finding what you seek. 
Now, this is an interesting part. Now, check this out. He says, if you seek for two goals, you will find two goals. <laughs> but you will recognize neither goal. What does that mean? Well, your mind is always striving for integration. Your mind is always trying to make things one. And if your mind is divided and split between love and fear, for instance, and it wants to keep the split, your mind will still believe it has one goal by making it seem like you have one goal. Now, that, all that simply means is we got a bunch of goals, but we could just say we have one goal when the truth is we don't just have one goal. I want to be one with you, Demola, but I also want to be separate from you. <laughs> Demola, I want to join with you on the condition that I can get away from you whenever I want to. Yeah. See, you see what I'm saying? It's like, it's, so it looks like I got one goal, but actually, I got multiple goals that I'm calling one. I'll say you're one with me, and then the next second I say, you're a stranger. Yeah. You better not come anywhere near me. Right. We, we all, we, he said we have a split mind. The mind's trying to integrate into it. So we'll say, here's another example. We'll say stuff like, I love everybody. Yeah, That's right. another lie. <laughs> right? It's the biggest lie. And for most people, I know that some people in denial will say they love everybody, but that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. They think they, they can't feel good about themselves unless they tell themselves something that makes them think they're nicer than they are. Most people do that in order to feel good about themselves. That's just human nature. You know, you know, even the villains, the biggest villain in the movie, you know, they, they, they think they need to be shown some mercy when they find somebody catch up with them. They be, you going to kill me, Jane Bond? You know, you know, I just try to put a laser between your legs. You think I'm kidding? You know, so the course says, I said before that what you project or extend is up to you, but you're going to either project, which means there's a quality in me that I'm not willing to own, so I'm going to see it in you. Yeah. Or I'm going to extend, which means I'm going to say the quality that I see in you it's is a quality right. that I also see in my own right. mind. That's the difference between project. Proje the only difference between projection and extension is one, in one case you're assuming responsibility and saying it's connected to you, but mm -hmm. it's you. And on the other case, you're still you, but you're saying it's not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still you. So he says, for that, he says, you must do one or the other. He says, what? For that is a law of mind. Remember I said this is all about universal yes. law? Mm -hmm. So he says, mm -hmm. it's a law of the mind that <clears throat> whatever is in your mind, you're going to see it on the outside, and you're going to say either I projected it or I didn't. Mm -hmm. But it still is your extension. It's still your projection. And he says, uh, you... <laughs> You, you must look in before you look out. Yes. Mm -hmm. You must look in before you look out. Now, the next part of this paragraph, the course is going to describe in detail the process of how you see things. Here it goes. It says, as you look in, you choose who's going to guide what you're seeing. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking in. And then I'm saying, now, am I going to let what I'm going to see next be guided by my ego and my fear? Or am I going to let what's going to be seen next be decided by the Holy Spirit, which is the love in me? Mm. He says, you choose the guide for seeing. Mm. And then, he says, you look out and you see the witnesses for the yes. guide that you chose. Yes. Yes. How, yes. What could be yes. simpler than that? I look on the inside and I see guilt in myself. Mm. So I'm letting guilt be my guide. And then the guilt gives me witnesses yeah. to my guilt. I look yes. out and I see all the reasons why I should feel guilty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. why you find what you seek. <laughs> okay, like people like, well, why, how do you, what do you mean find what you see? First you look in, you decide who's going to guide your seat, and then you look out and you see what the guy you decide to listen to has decided to show you because you chose to see it. If I want to see bodies in this room, then that's all I'm going to see is bodies. If I look inside and I decide I want to see minds and spirit and consciousness in this room, all of a sudden I'm not paying any attention to your body. I'm just focused on what you're thinking and what you're thinking and what you're seeing and where your consciousness is. And uh, one day a person's mind is going to mean more to you than their body. 
I don't. I know that sounds deep. I know that. That's <laughs> I know that's what I'm going to say. Really? It's too deep. Yeah, it's a, it's a, that's a yeah, yeah, that's that's when I discovered women. <laughs> when, when, when when I started back the mind more than the body was when I started to really see women for the first time and what they really have to offer. I'm just being straight up. That's true. Yeah, because in the male body, I was very much programmed to focus on the female form. Y'all know that's true. Mm -hmm. right. act like I'm, I'm not saying y'all acting like, but I'm going to tell people, get real. You know that's the deal. So, as I began to understand that there was a man that went with their body, much to my disappointment. <laughs> 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 and that I was going to end up dealing with their mind, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Because I don't care how good the bodily experience was, what I noticed was that over a period of time, it would begin to fade. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I never met anybody that that hasn't been true. Yes. I don't care how good the physical is at first. It can only sustain your attention just so long, and then all of a sudden you go, this person crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, they got, and they got my phone number, they got my address, uh, they got the keys, they know all my friends, <laughs> they know my password. Uh -oh. <laughs> that, 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 that really got your address. <laughs> It didn't really hit home until I said password. Everybody, oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh. Everybody knows my password. That's right. <laughs> the Cause of Miracle says the way we got in a fearful world is that we, we remember not to laugh. And yeah. that's why, even though some people don't like it, I always try to bring some humor into my presentation. It's because it's easy. A, a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine Ooh, go down. Right now. Oh, I think that's, that's original. I think that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a commercial. I think that's a line. I think mm -hmm. I have to work right with that one. <laughs> <laughs> so it's easier to hear hardcore true concerts, concerts if you let yourself laugh. Mm -hmm. And then the court says, as you look in, you choose the guy for seeing you. And you look inside and you say, I'm going to let fear guide the way I see things alone. Then you say, then you look out and behold his witnesses. Okay, I know what I've chosen by what I'm seeing. So if I'm seeing peace, I must have chosen it. If I'm seeing conflict, I must have chosen it. And you reduce the course to love and fear becomes the simplest book you ever read. But if you need it to be complicated, it can be real complicated. Yeah, sure. Then it says, this is why you seek what you find. Well, I'm glad. You mean, if I could look inside, see my, and have thoughts of abundance, then the truth is... That's my guide for seeing, is the idea of my abundance, and so I would start to see abundance in my life, exactly how it works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then it says, uh, what you want, now this is deep, what you want in yourself, you will make manifest what you want in yourself. Okay, so I want love in myself. I want peace in myself. I want abundance in myself. I want health in myself. And you will accept what you want from the world. Whatever you accepting, that's what you want. If you say, I don't want it, then you're no longer accepting it, right? You're saying no to it. But whatever you've accepted, like it's saying right here. And don't forget, the way that I'm sharing this with you is not the only way to look at it. <laughs> I just want to say that. And it, and, and it doesn't make the way I'm looking at it wrong because you look at it differently from me. And it doesn't make the way you're looking at it wrong to me because you're looking at it differently from me. One of us does not have to be wrong for the other one to be right. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, Because that's how you have real communication with people. If I feel like I can share my point of view without us getting in a debate as to who's right and who's wrong, you and I will have an incredible conversation. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting, it'll be open, and we'll walk away feeling closer to each other than ever before. Mm -hmm. But if we get into one of them conversations where every time I get my point of view, then you tell me the opposite way you think from the perspective that I'm supposed to be wrong, mm -hmm. then it's going to shut down our communication. If you're sharing it from the perspective of this is my point of view, then we can still chug forward. So I want you to know, whenever you're talking to me, that's how I'm looking at it. 
You'll never hear me try to change your point of view. I want, because I have mine. Mine is working for me. So I ain't going to change it for yours anyway. So don't even waste your time. Right? Now, if my point of view wasn't working, I hope that I'm sane enough to be open to another point of view. Right. Hopefully. Especially if you are exemplifying the benefits of that point of view <laughs> by you yourself appearing to be a loving, peaceful person. Right. Right? Don't be trying to get me to pay attention to you and you the meanest, coldest, unkind person around, but I'm supposed <clears throat> to want to jump on your point of view. Because I'm looking <laughs> at you and you are either a lousy representation of what you're saying or you a perfect witness for what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And much rather people say, Purdy, it looks like you're more peaceful and loving than you used to be. What is it you're studying? Because then I know I'm demonstrating that that makes me a good teacher. Mm -hmm. But if I'm saying, you need to get into the Course of Miracles, because Course of Miracles is about peace, <laughs> <laughs> then I kind of, well, the Course of Miracles doesn't seem like it's working for you. <laughs> because you don't sound peaceful, you don't look peaceful, and you're not acting peaceful. So you're a poor representation of what you say I should be studying. That's why you should tell people, I am a student too. I'm working on this too. That's right. I'm not perfect at it yet either. So the Course says, what you want in yourself, you will make manifest. You will accept it from where? The world. Now check out the last part of this sentence. Because you put it in the world by wanting it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mean when I really want something, I'm putting it in the world? Mm -hmm. I'm putting it in my perception? Yeah. yeah. I'll say, he says, listen to me again. First, you have to want it in yourself. He says, if you want to manifest it, it means that if you want it in yourself, it has to be something that you're accepting, you're willing to accept from the world. How do you put it in the world? You put it there by wanting it. it. So there's nothing more. The Course says we must recognize the power of our wanting something. Mm -hmm. See, some people think they're wanting something has no power. I've been wanting it and I haven't gotten it yet. The Course says you don't recognize the power of you wanting something. But it, it also said it has to be something that you want to see in yourself. See, sometimes I want you to be kind, but I'm not focusing on me being kind in myself. Mm -hmm. You see, if, if I don't love me, then I'm accepting that in myself, which means that I'm wanting that in myself because I do have a choice. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I am putting it in the world by wanting it. Mm -hmm. Then I walk up on other people who don't love themselves mm -hmm. because I don't love myself. Then we all get together and complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you, you hear me now? About how unloving the world is. Right, right. I did you my sob story about what, the way I was brought up. Mm -hmm. You give me the sob story about the way you were brought up. And so we create and make it realer for each other by constantly sharing those ideas with each other and ideas manifest. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden you're surrounded by people who don't know how to love and you wonder why. Mm -hmm. Now here's another one. Now this is, these are deep laws. Now I'm at that point now where it's, the course is either waking you up or putting you to sleep. <laughs> right. Go to sleep. <laughs> okay. But don't ever think for a second that that part of you that's trying to put you to sleep is your ego. Mm -hmm. Because I'm talking about how you can have what you want. <laughs> I'll say that again. This is all about how you can have what you want. So how could you really believe you really want to have what you want, but you're not willing to listen to the way to have it? Right. Mm -hmm. And then people say, well, where, well how do things don't go the way? Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. You don't really want it. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Well, then why are you going unconscious? 
You follow what I'm saying? And, and this is not a condemnation or judgment. The Course is trying to make us aware that there's a part of us that we don't know about that is self-sabotaging <laughs> and, why, and why and how it works. The part of you that is self-sabotaging in the name of its own self-preservation has to make you go unconscious when the truth that would alleviate it and exposes it shows up. Right. So if I'm with someone and they can't stay conscious, I'm with someone who can't stay conscious. <laughs> so when they come out of an unconscious place, go off, get angry, use their temper, break their word, don't act shocked. Are they interested in the truth? No. What happens when you try to tell them the truth? Do they have any kind of path their own? Do they ever talk any kind of truth about anything in any kind of way? Do they take responsibility for anything? Mm -hmm. Then you know they're going to be that way with you. Right. As soon as you don't act out their script, mm -hmm. as soon as you trigger whatever it is, right? Because if they don't want it in themselves yet, so they're not going to be able to see it in you right. yet. Right. Mm -hmm. So, if... If I want to be prosperous tomorrow, then I see what I seek. I owe, tomorrow comes tomorrow, I want to seek happiness tomorrow. I want to get prosperous tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if that's how I sleep, you know, at tomorrow. I want to quit smoking tomorrow. Right. So I, I find what I seek. That's uh, right. And it's funny. Seeking, it, it, uh, quit smoking tomorrow. And what's yeah. really funny about that is, if I want it to be tomorrow, it'll be no. in the future. Yeah. Comes through right. Yeah. So I'm still getting what I want. It's mm -hmm. still manifesting the way that I want it to manifest. I want to finish this paragraph, and I'm going to stop at the end of this paragraph, because I, I, I'm going to go through this whole section. And plus, I want to slow down, and I want to hear what this is saying. So, 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 the, so, so either... Either people are going to stop coming or some brand new people are going to start coming. <laughs> or some people are going to stay. But this year, I'm getting hard, even harder core into the course. I'm not going to be trying to keep people awake. I'm not going to be trying to get, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything but try to be as loving or conduit as I can be and let everybody else be responsible for how, what it means. And it's innocent because I am sustained by the love of God. People will not see who the honest you is if you're dependent on them for anything. Mm -hmm. The temptation is going to be to change what you say and what you do out of a sense of self-preservation because you need their support in your mind and without it, you can't make it. Yeah. It's when you have your connection with God so tight that you know you're going to be sustained and provided for no matter who comes and goes in your life that people will start to see your authentic self. If you're taking care of me and paying my bills, and you feed me, I'm not. I'm gonna I'm think twice before I tell you something that I think you might not like. If I'm dependent on you, that's why people tell you what they really think about you after y'all break up. <laughs> why? Because they not. They don't have nothing to lose at that point. So they'll say, well, the truth is, I hated the Course in Miracles. I've had that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've had a relationship where women act like they were into my ministry and what I'm teaching and what I'm doing because they wanted to be in a special relationship with me. And as soon as they saw they weren't going to get what they wanted the way that they thought they wanted it, then they stopped doing anything that they ever did for me that I liked because it, didn't, it had nothing to do with them really wanting to do it. It was all part of what? Achieving the goal you set for yourself, so, which is to yes. have this person. An invitation for bait. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and I invited all of that. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh -huh. I'm not a victim of any relationship I've ever had. Mm -hmm. It was always a reflection of my own consciousness. <laughs> And so if they play games, I play games. That's right. There's only one player. I really don't like saying this. <laughs> it's your ego. <laughs> I just want to be clear with all y'all. You know? I don't like saying I had nothing to do with it. Uh -huh. That's why I can understand people having that attitude. Mm -hmm. Because it, it is hard to own that no, you're the one that's creating and you have created every relationship you've ever had. That's right. And then it, it, it went, it, here's a good, the kicker. 
everything that happened in that relationship happened to me because that's what I wanted. Yeah. That's what I invited. And that's what everybody in it wanted. Exactly. It's a co-collaboration. And there wasn't but two things I could experience out of that relationship. You know, there's only two things I could experience out of any relationship. Joy or pain. Love or fear. And which one I have with you is going to be the one I decide to have by looking inside myself and seeing who do I want to guide my perceptions. <laughs> my ego? Just kick their butt. They horrible. Yeah. Or the Holy Spirit. It's either love or call the love, girl. Yeah. No yeah. matter what. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> again. Choose uh, once again. Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> When I was a kid, that's what they had in cartoons. Uh -huh. I don't know if y'all remember. Yeah, they had the devil on one show, the show, little yeah. devil, with, mm -hmm. and then it'd be the angel on the other mm -hmm. one. That's that's the course of miracles in a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> that's the whole book. It said there are two voices, there are two ways of looking at things, and you're letting either one voice or the other one tell you what to see or do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have a different result, you got to do a different invitation, and you have a workbook in the book that's divided into two parts. The first part of the workbook, it says, is to undo the way you see now that's causing you pain and fear and separation. Mm -hmm. And then the second half of the workbook, he says, is the acquisition of the correct and true loving perception you're supposed to use. So the course is doing it all. It says, okay, you wonder how you're going to change your mind and send out new invitations? The workbook. Mm -hmm. Then it goes, and you don't even have to figure out what you should tell yourself to have the new perception that's loving, this is here too. Tell yourself this, and this will produce the loving perception and world you're looking for. And what is it that people are most tempted not to do? And to no, quit, no. and to quit <laughs> within the first 50 lessons is first? The workbook. Mm -hmm. But then you understand, if the workbook is going to get me out of all fear and separation, and guilt, then the part of me that believes in fear and separation and guilt, guess what? It's not going to want me to do the workbook. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I'll come up with every reason in the world not to. I do you know my favorite excuse I, I hear for not doing the workbook that I love. This is the first ones, the first yeah. lessons that, you know, they are like a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did a whole day, two minutes to You know, it, 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 a whole day. It, it, it's hilarious. People say, I didn't have time. I didn't have time. <laughs> 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 you're so busy, you don't have a minute. a minute. You must be the most accomplished person on the planet. <laughs> That's hilarious to people tell me that they didn't have time. No, mm -hmm. I don't have the motivation yet. Mm -hmm. I'm not, mm -hmm. because, I, you know what? Because I don't really believe this is going to get me what I want. If I believe the Course in Miracles would get me what I wanted, doing the Course in Miracles would be no problem. I have a hard time put, putting my attention on something that I don't think is helping me. Yeah. And you're trying to force me to focus on something that I don't think helps me, but you wouldn't have to force me to focus on it if I thought it was going to get me what. The truth is I got my own plan, and I just want to use the course to help me carry out my plan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So anything in the course that backs up the decisions I made, I'm open to. You say anything different from the way I made it up, it should be... And that's my resistance. Yeah. Would you acknowledge yourself and hear yeah. it? Oh, man. Woo! 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 All right. Uh, I'm going to do the love offering, and then I'm going to do a quick recap, a couple of minutes, so we have something we can run out of here. Um, there's a list that I have up front of people that I'm trying to get a list together of the people who are actually studying and reading the Course in Miracles right now. So if you are actually studying and reading the Course in Miracles, and if you're not, that's fine. Please continue to come. I love you being here and listening to it. But, I, but I've also got 40 years of this stuff under my belt, and I'd love in 2020 to have some things that I create, especially for those people who are actually studying the Course. So, and I, so that would be, so if you go to my website and say that that's what you're doing, or the thing I love here in the room, because what I'm doing, you all, is I'm trying to let everybody and, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm, this may come off weird, and I don't mean it to sound weird. But right now, I'm trying to decide whether or not I'll continue to do live classes 
this year. Mm -hmm. And that depends on whether or not people come. It's a radical concept. <laughs> <laughs> now, and so that's not trying to say you got to come every day. Of course you don't. But I do have to put it out there that those of you, if y'all really want community to come together to study the course, if that's important, then when you can innocently do it, come. Give it some priority like you give other things priority. So because I would love for us to have an opportunity to physically interact. That'd be great. That'd be great. But I don't want to get up and put on clothes, take a shower, come over here for two people. I'm not that spiritual. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> I wish I could say I, I wish I could say I'm that spiritual, but I'm not that spiritual. You don't have to take a shower. Yeah, yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because when I listen to this, it, it says we, you know, that what we value is what we invest in. Yeah, that's right. Right. And I also know everybody's here by divine order, and if there's some way else they need to be there, and that's okay too. So nothing I'm saying is coming from a perspective of trying to make anybody feel guilty or feel pressured. Because in the end, you're still going to do what you want to do. You might feel guilty, still don't come. You know what I'm saying? You're still going to do what you want to do. So that's part of 40 years of doing the course. There's just certain things that I have accepted. But I also realize it's okay to ask what? Ask for what you want. Because if you let go of who you think is supposed to fulfill your wishes, the course says then what you want is going to come to you in the form that can present it to you, mm -hmm. which might not be the person or the situation you've chosen. If I say I want an intimate, loving relationship, and then I decide who's supposed to give it to me, and that's not the person that's supposed to give it to me, how do I know that? They're not giving it to me. <laughs> and they may even get upset that I even want them to give it to me. If there's a restraining order on you from that person, they're not your soulmate. Some people go the hardest. <laughs> some people go the hardest after the uh, after the people who resist them the most. Oh. That's who they put their most energy in. Jesus. Is the people who resist them the most. I'm not that way. I'm gonna back off. I'm gonna back off because I want you to feel safe. And so if you don't feel safe, I'm gonna back off. I'm gonna give you plenty of space because if we ever gonna connect, it's gonna come out of you feeling safe. That's the most important quality you can have in a relationship with somebody, is you feel safe mm -hmm. with them, right? Mm -hmm. And you're only going to be safe with somebody who listens to you and who observes yeah. you, who is not self-absorbed and it's all about them. Well, so the therefore, they're not even listening to what your boundaries are or even listening to what it is you say you want and how you say you want it. Because all they're thinking about when they're with you is how they can get their particular agenda across. So they're not really listening to you they're really thinking of their next move. <laughs> <laughs> and they're really annoying to talk to. Yeah. It gets easier the more you get you to study the course. Making right choices becomes easier as you study the course. Mm -hmm. Then you just have to admit you just wanted to give yourself that catastrophe. Mm -hmm. Or you just have to admit that that was a great choice you made. But you won't be able to say anymore, I didn't know better. You you knew within 15 minutes of that conversation that that person was not the person that was really the most compatible with you because you know yourself well enough to know what it is. So, but you did it anyway. You gave him the phone number anyway. You went out with him anyway. And then at the back end, you all crying and complaining like that relationship just showed up. You know, no, you're conscious. You know. You've been studying. You know. You're just choosing to overlook what you know. Mm -hmm. And you're innocent, and you're not going to be punished. There's no need to punish you. Nobody could do a better job than you do. <laughs> I know my weaknesses. So, so if anybody can hurt Earl the best, it's Earl. I know what upsets him. You see, so... Nobody could ever do it to you better than you can do it to you. So that's why you need to let go of any desire to punish yourself or think that you don't deserve to be happy. Because everybody else, nobody else is thinking about you all day in terms of how they can hurt you. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you that. That there's not a person. It might be one. It might be your ex. but <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that would be rare, to be absolutely honest. I mean, I want you to hear what I'm saying. 
Don't be so self-absorbed, Earl. Don't be so self-absorbed that you think people are walking around all day thinking about you and what you're doing and how you're doing it. They aren't. Mm -hmm. So they aren't trying to punish you. They aren't trying to figure out anything to do to hurt you. That hurt that you are experiencing, you're doing it to yourself. Hear me now. You're doing it to yourself. What? You're doing it to yourself. And that's good news. Because that means it could go another way. It really does. So those of you online, if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, which I'd be grateful for, go to my website, earlpurdy.com, earlpurdy.com. And I've also uh, been having some incredible clarity sessions with people. That's been so fulfilling and helpful for them and for me. So, you know, consider having a one-on-one -on -one with me. And uh, I also use my knowledge of astrology and numerology. You can go to my website. You can self-book an appointment online. And they are not free. <laughs> <laughs> All those thousand classes I got online are free. Yeah. So I do give. And I do give without any thought of what I'm going to receive. Some people resent me. You know some people res actually resent me asking for an opportunity for people to share. That is so deep to me. That just because I want to be a voice for God, somehow a voice for love, somehow that means I don't deserve to have the things that would house me and clothe me and feed me. But somehow that's a con artist. Mm. Because you desire to pay your bills? Yeah, because I desire to be take care of my needs just like they do. And and I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm not doing anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and what I have to do all the time is I forgive myself for when I was just like that. Because, it, because yes. everybody's always presenting me with my past. Mm -hmm. The Course says you see only the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So every time someone comes to me in any kind of, well, Earl, haven't you been angry? Haven't you been selfish? Haven't you ever just thought about yourself? Haven't you been kind? Haven't you been giving? It's just not on the negative side. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, like, it's like, so thank you for coming to me, giving me an opportunity to forgive myself for that, which frees me from grievances that block my miracles. Mm -hmm. So you, you know what I'm saying? So you don't know, you, if you're studying the Course in Miracles, you truly are studying the spiritual path that will challenge the fool out of you, but it will also create miracles in your life that will blow your mind to the point that you really do believe something supernatural is going on mm -hmm. in terms of how you see yourself being rescued, taken care of, and some kind of way solutions happen in situations that you can't even imagine how you gonna get a solution out of that? Mm -hmm. The Course in Miracles is not kidding. When it says miracles, what I found, even though it's talking about perception the most, I found it literally, physically, in my life, has produced miracles. Mm -hmm. And what I wanna do it my way is what slows it down. Mm -hmm. When I wanna do it this way, that's when I get the miracle in an instant. Shay. Um, one, of, one of my favorite lessons from the Course in Miracles was not trying so hard to move toward things that were moving away from me. That's right. To move toward what is already coming to me and how much peace it brings you um, to do that. So you, you, you are the divine teacher of repetition, and I'm so glad because you say that often, and I'm always reminded, like, yeah. Well, that, that, thank you for saying that. No. Thank you. That's why I call myself the DRT, the divine repetition teacher. And I also mean DRT means the divine remembering. Teacher. Because that's what it says. You saw it in today's lesson. Remember, remember, remember. It's the you think the way you think now, and you believe the way you believe now because of repetition. You, you, somebody told you when you were stupid over and over and over again if you were a kid before you started to believe that. Somebody, you know, it's repetition. And so the advantage is if you start repeating the truth, it's more powerful than when you're repeating things that are of the ego. Because the whole universe, God is behind every loving thought that you repeat. Where nothing but you is behind every unloving thought you repeat. Yeah. 
think about that. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for coming. I'm going to stop here. Thank you for coming. I love you. You're a blessing in my life. And uh, may the course be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Mighty Companions Online. Mm -hmm. And you're innocent if I never see you again. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say that again because the ego goes, I don't want one tap of I wake up on a Sunday morning and I ought to be in the chorus class even though I don't feel like doing it. See what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. that's the old paradigm. Yeah. And I, and, but then at the same time, as you grow spiritually, you know the importance of being authentic and being able to just say what you really think and feel. So it's an, inter it's an interesting balance between me loving you all enough to be honest about the things that I'm feeling, while at the same time my ego is tempted to say, well, don't say that because then if people don't come, then the temptation would be to feel guilty. And Spirit says you never lose by honest, authentic communication. Oh, right. So no matter what the outcome is, if you express yourself mm -hmm. honestly and sincerely and your goal was not to make anyone feel guilty, then you shouldn't have any guilt That's right. or fear. So if I have some guilt and fear, then it means there's a part of me wanted y'all to feel a little guilty. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and all I have to do is go, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit, for letting me know that I still need to let go of some guilt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's how you make the course practical. Yeah. Mm. Mm. yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Y'all are awesome. Y'all are awesome. May the course course through you. May the course course through me. And let's pass the offering. Oh, did we? I thought I did. did. I did, didn't I? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad you spoke up like that. <laughs>